my beautiful friends and welcome back to my channel. This is Nova Gnome Creations and I'm Nova and this is an update on my luck of the draw, the draw, <laughs> luck of the draw, uh, freeform crochet um, shawl. So I'm working on connecting it together now. And if you missed the um, making of all the different pieces, I actually did do a video every week updating on it and you can find the playlist in the description box of this video. So I'm um, working on doing like chains and double crochets and all this kind of stuff to connect it together. Um, and what I did was I actually went around making little knots, connecting the pieces together. Um, and then I'm going around and adding crochet in. So like here are the knots kind of connecting the pieces. I laid them out to see where I wanted them to go. Um, and then I just put like knots at different intervals where I wanted them to touch. And then I'm working on making the crochet to fill in the areas, you know, make it more secure. Um, and that's how I'm doing it for this portion. I don't know if I'll do that for all of it. Some parts might have more crochet in between the knots. Um, you know, maybe I won't connect the pieces directly together for all of it. Um, but that's what I did for this portion. And I'm working on making like the bottom part of the shawl where it kind of comes to a point. Um, so here is kind of what I'm looking like so far with things that are connected. And it's really random the way that I'm doing it. I'm just kind of doing whatever I feel like in the moment. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to it. I'm not trying to do, you know, all specific stitches or all a specific way of connecting it. I actually would like it to um, not be the same, you know, just to be whatever works in that moment, whatever like just comes naturally. So um, here I'm working on tying together um, my working yarn and a tail from one of the knots that I made. And I'm doing the um, magic knot, um, which I have talked about a little bit before, but um, it's a way to make a knot if you want your yarn to like continue. It's how they make the knots in like your skeins of yarn that you buy. Um, where you can actually cut the like tail off right up to the knot and it won't come out. It's like a super, super sturdy knot. Um, so I was making a magic knot and um, putting it on where I had tied um, two pieces together and then making it into a working yarn so that I just have one less tail to, to weave in because there's so many tails and you know, the less tails you have to weave in the better. <laughs> so um, now that I connected that, I, I'm just going ahead and attaching on and creating myself a loop so I can start to crochet. And um, I decided to make this video because I was working on connecting, you know, my pieces together. And I realized that this is also a part of like the freeform crochet that is probably, um, you know, more intimidating and like people don't know what, what like how you would do it. Um, and to be fair, I don't know how you do it either. I'm just making it up as I go along, um, which is kind of how I feel, um, you know, the idea for freeform crochet sort of is, is just to kind of make it up as you go along. And that's like the fun part about it is there isn't any rules kind of dictating the way that it needs to be done. So it's really different, you know? It's one of the things I like about crochet a lot. So um, what I'm doing here is, uh, I like slip stitched on to the one scrumble, which is the gray scrumble. And if you are new here and you haven't been watching my other videos, a scrumble is like a chunk of freeform crochet. It's like a piece of freeform crochet that you make to go together with other pieces to make a larger project. Um, so right now what I'm doing is I'm like slip stitching onto the gray scrumble and then I'm going down to the um, like chains that I made a little bit ago um, and I'm doing like a double crochet. And I made these chains and attaches um, while I was working on connecting together scrumbles. So they're all things I've added after the fact. Um, and basically my goal right now is just to fill in the gap and kind of make everything more like sturdily connected, sturdily, <laughs> um, you know, because this is gonna be a shawl. So right now I'm just debating, I'm like, do I want to do a double crochet or a triple crochet? Um, and I decided to do a triple crochet. I was kind of looking at the size of the gap and um, how much I wanted it to pull up. You know, if you make a double crochet, it's a little bit shorter of a stitch. Um, so it's going to pull your work up and cinch it together a little bit more. Um, so I was like, how big, you know, how long do I want this stitch to be? And so I decided to do some triple crochets. 
But yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm just doing doubles and triples and like slip stitching up to the gray one um, in between each time, you know, to make it connected. And that just happens to be how I'm connecting together this portion. Um, in the the round or the row before this one that I'm kind of connecting onto that you see down there with the chains, um, I was doing like double crochets and then chaining like four or five or something and then double crocheting into another piece and then chaining again. So um, now I'm at this part where I'm coming up to this little posy flower, that little like um, minty bluish green color right there. And I was just debating on how I wanted to connect to the posy um, since it is different. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get kind of kind of creative with this and sort of rotate my work around while I do it. Um, because I wanted it to connect all the way over on the green scrumble I was already working on. But then if I go all the way to the edge of that, connecting it to the gray, it still left a hole right here and I wanted that hole filled in. So I um, went all the way over and then I just slip stitched uh, along the uh, other piece of the gray right there. You see those slip stitches? Um, and then I connected to the posy and then I'm just rotating my work so I can work in those slip stitches I just made on that gray scrumble and connect to the posy. I hope that makes sense. I know it's a little difficult to explain, but hopefully you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But here's me trying to decide <laughs> how I want to put my uh, loop back on my hook. And then I'm like trying to figure out where I want to um, attach on to this posy or onto this um, other scrumble, maybe not directly onto the posy, but. And then I just did a double crochet and then I'm going into those slip stitches that I made to get myself over here and doing a slip stitch. And I'm just gonna keep doing the same thing I was doing, um, working my way uh, around this little spot right here. So there's really no rules with freeform crochet. Like you saw, I literally just like rotated my work randomly in the middle of doing it um, to work my way back and fill in a gap. You can do that. Like you can literally do anything you want. You can flip your work at any point in time. You know, you can, you can do whatever you want. So very uh, creative and open to doing whatever you want kind of project. So I ended up not laying this out. Originally I had talked about laying it out and like drawing the shape of the, of the um, shawl onto like a sheet or a big piece of fabric or a big piece of paper or something. And then like lining up my scrumbles in it kind of like a puzzle and sort of figuring out where I wanted them to go. I did try to do that, but I found, I just, um, I couldn't find a way to do it that worked for the size that I was trying to do for the shawl. It just wasn't working for me. So I decided um, I'm just gonna literally freeform it and not try to um, make kind of a template to um, you know decide where my, my scrumbles are going. I literally just started. Like I just, I decided that this green one um, with the leaves on it that's here at the bottom with the sparkles and everything would be the point of my um, shawl. And then I just started like making it up as I went along and that's what I'm gonna continue to do. And that's why I don't know if I have enough scrumbles yet. I'll know as I continue on in my project, there's a good chance I don't, um, which is totally fine. Um, Nan from Nan's Next Knots, uh, who I will link in the description box of this video, is the one who uh, did the luck of the draw where she would pull the numbers from the hat. Um, and that's how I picked my colors for my scrumbles. She actually picked some extra ones just in case you needed more um, numbers for whatever your project was. So I actually have some leeway um, with extra ones anyways, but I could also just go back to the beginning and start um, going through it again if I needed to make more scrumbles and still wanted to keep the colors randomized. Um, so I'm not concerned about that at all, but I just wanted to start getting it connected together, you know? Don't mind my cat, he's at the door and is upset that I shut him out of here. Yeah, I know, I hear you. <laughs> but yeah, so this is me um, weaving in my end. Um, 
so I thought I would just kind of show the way that I'm hiding my tails. There's a lot of tails um, with a project like this. It's sort of similar to um, doing like a granny square blanket or something where like, you know, you've got all the granny square tails. Well, I tried to weave in all of my scrumble tails as I went so that I wouldn't have so many tails because each scrumble has so many tails because of all the color changes. Um, but, and, and I did do that. I think I have like one scrumble in here that I didn't do that for, but, um, the difference is versus like a granny square blanket or something where you might connect pieces together continuously and not have so many tails. There's a lot of working in pieces, at least the way that I'm connecting mine together. There's a lot of working in pieces. Um, and like the way that I went around and did knots to kind of hold the, the um, scrumble pieces together at certain points to, um, you know, form the shape that I wanted to form. And then, you know, that's just how I did mine. It's got a lot of tails. So I figured I would show you guys how I am weaving in my tails. Basically, I just go back and forth over the same spot multiple times because it's going to add a lot of security so that my stitches don't come out. And I'm also using like an actual sewing needle and not like a darning needle like I would normally use for like amigurumi and stuff um, because you can really like catch the fibers. Um, it's best if you can kind of catch the fibers and pull your yarn through like the middle of a piece of yarn rather than like just under like a stitch. You know what I'm saying? So. And then here is me, I uh, am attaching onto a different spot and uh, looking at all my tails and whatnot, flipping it around, figuring out how I want to do it. Um, I'm going to the other side of this gray scrumble now and working that little gap. And right now what I'm doing is measuring out how long I want these chains to be by just laying my work flat on my desk. Um, so I attach on and then I'll do some more, um, you know, chaining to wherever I want. Um, and then I just lay it flat and I see if that's like the shape that I'm wanting it to have. Uh, and then I can, you know, slip stitch my way over to where I'm wanting the next chain to be. And I just keep laying it flat to see how it's laying so that I know it's working up flat. Um, and filling in the area I want it to fill in without bunching up a bunch. And here is what we are looking like so far. So you can change the way that it looks too by um, doing your slip stitches or your stitches in general into like front loop onlys or back loop onlys or through the whole stitch, um, things like that. So you can create kind of whatever look you want. Also, you see how this looks versus how like the double crochets and the triple crochets looked. Um, they all kind of give different effects and you can use whatever you want to um, connect your pieces. 
So I'm just kind of filling in the gaps right now for my pieces. Um, some of them later I may do more border work on, like work on, um, you know, adding some more to the outside of the shapes before I connect them together. You know, maybe do like a trim all the way around. Um, you know, maybe like continue on the spirals a little bit, some of the spiral ones with the trim color. Um, because I'm doing, uh, if I, I actually didn't say this in this video, if you haven't seen my other videos, you might not know, but I did all of my luck of the draw scrumbles in, um, certain colors. So like when she drew a number, I had that correlated with a color. So for example, if it was three, it might be blue. If it was four, it might be green, whatever the color was that I had matched to that number. Um, but for my border and like attachment color that I'm like putting together the shawl with, I'm using one, um, yarn. I'm actually using a uh, red heart, um, roll with it melange. So Sorry, I'm picking up my cat. <laughs> I let him in if you wondered and you might hear him purring now I'm holding him. Um, so I'm using the Red Heart Roll With It Melange to connect it all together, which is like kind of, you know, a variegated um, color changing sort of yarn. And um, so I might, you know, incorporate the color a little bit more um, by adding some more like trim to my pieces, I guess. Um, and not just like single crochets around the edges or something. I mean, I might do, you know, basically more of the same of what I did in that scrumble. Who knows? Um, at this point of the scrumble, I was, just, or at the, this point of the shawl, I'm just really focusing on getting that point of the shawl going. And then once I build up a little bit and have more of that open space where I'm connecting them together, I'll probably start putting a little bit more space in between the scrumbles. Um, and using my connecting color to uh, do a little bit more color work, I guess.
So hopefully this was at least somewhat um, helpful or insightful or interesting in some way. Um, I just thought that it might be interesting uh, for you guys to see how I'm connecting these scrumbles together anyways. And like I said, this is my first um, project that I'm doing with freeform crochet. These scrumbles were literally my first time ever doing anything freeform crochet. Um, and so this is my first time actually assembling a project, like connecting together the scrumbles and attempting to make something with them. Um, so this is also a learning experience for me. This is just how I'm connecting them together right now. And as I get further in my project, I may, you know, evolve the way that I'm connecting them together. I may get a better feel for it and like decide I want to do something different. Um, right now I'm just, you know, following the will of my hook and yarn and um, looking at the size of the area I'm filling in and laying it flat um, and basically just doing something that fills in that area in a way that makes it um, lay the way that I want it to lay. So it's mostly being um, single crochets, doubles, triples, and chains uh, and slip stitches. So quite a bit of variety actually. Um, but like I said, I'll probably want more of this trim color to show up later um, throughout the shawl. So I will probably work on incorporating it a little bit more, not just to connect, but also to kind of build up a little bit. Also, when I am finished with the shawl, I do plan on doing a border around the whole shawl in this yarn. So um, hopefully it'll all tie together really nicely. And this, this yarn is so colorful and beautiful. I really like it. Um, I think it's going to work really well with all these different colors in the shawl as like the yarn that pulls it all together. But anyway, guys, I hope that you are doing well and I hope you and your loved ones are taking care of the best that you can. I hope you guys are having a wonderful summer. Um, we are already like halfway through July, which is crazy. It is going by so fast. Um, but I hope you guys are doing awesome. Um, and I will be back to making full-time content, uh, next month. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I'll see you guys around. Uh, and don't forget tomorrow's community spotlight. So send in those emails if you would like to send in something for community spotlight tomorrow. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye guys.